Now it's time to sort bag H7 through H13 of the Dear Jane Row H pack. And in the back of this pack says that the four and a half inch squares are used for H2, H8, and H12. I've already used the corners or the square for H2, so I labeled them H8 and H12. Or the first time I opened up my row pack, I went through based on the packet and labeled each block that they had modifications in there for so that when I open up my book, if it says that it's a modified block, then I can go into my row pack booklet and open up and use this to lay out my pieces rather than getting frustrated by the fact that, oh yeah, I forgot that this is an EPP modified block, so then I can go to this and lay out my pieces on this particular, because this is exact. All right, so I've dumped out my bag, and one of the things I've noticed is there's some heart shapes, and so what I'll do is I'll sort out the weird looking things, just because, you know, I know that I don't need it for my first H7 block, so, um, but there's a lot of triangles in a lot of these bags, and some of them don't vary by much, and we'll go over that. But so I'll sort out some of these bits and put them into what I, I call them like piles. So I'll put like a, a bunch of little triangles in one section and medium and, you know, it just depends on what's in the bag. So in this case, I'm going to put little triangles in one section and then the diamonds. And as I find pieces for this H7 block, then I'll move on to the next one and so on and so forth. All right, so here's my H7 layout, and I found a square that fits exactly into this bit. So what I'm going to do is, if there's any squares that are close, I'm going to put it next to this piece to make sure that it fits exactly to the side of this, because occasionally the color really close. So I'm going to use this as my measurement for the squares. As I sort these out, I'll check my triangles. And I will use the right angle side because sometimes the hypotenuse side is hard to tell distance wise. So I will line it up based on the right angle side and obviously this one is too big and I'll set that aside. So I'll test these as I go through my pieces. Alright, so I found, I found a triangle that fits. And again, like the square, so that when I find another square I will line it up to the actual square itself to make sure it's exactly the right size. I will do the same thing with my triangle and make sure that I line it up on this edge or whatever, this edge is equal size, um, to make sure that the, the matching pieces, and I'm going to need four for each block, so I need 16 triangles and I need five of these squares. And then as I do this, I'm going to lay them out and I start from the upper left corner because I'm right-handed so that as I put stuff here I don't touch it and bump it. Now as a matter of confirmation I'm gonna when I find that this triangle goes here I'm gonna make sure that I check it to this because these blocks were cut from a single piece of paper at one point so they should line up exactly to each other. So this does check out here. All right, so I found all of my H7 bits, and I'm going to take my very fine Sharpie. I like using a Sharpie because it doesn't run, and I don't. And if you don't have to push very hard, so I'm going to label all these pieces with the block number, and I'm going to hold it down so that I don't shift them around because there's other things I need to do yet as well. So I just sit here and I work my way around the block and label these pieces. The hardest section for me is up here because I have a tendency, you know, being right-handed, you want to put your hand down to stabilize it and then you put it on the block and then your papers shift, which is okay to a point, but when you're dealing with some of these smaller pieces. Alright, so I've got my pieces all labeled and I want to refer to my book, and this is why I keep my book still here. My book has exactly where the focus fabric goes. And in this particular situation, they've eliminated the outside border. All of the pieces that have focus fabrics are going to be these 
Ohio, as soon as basically this is an Ohio star. So you have the middle is a focus fabric and then the opposite triangles. And I'm going to take my red Sharpie and I'm going to put a dot on the ones that are not background. As, and this is where not shifting helps. All right, so I'm going to have a red dot and all of these. And then we got these two. And then we got these two. And before I do anything else, I'm going to make sure I got everything. So I've got this one, and then these two, that, that corner that touches. This is not correct. So what I can do in this situation is flip these around so that they're in the right place. In this case, I can fix it. All right, so I've got these two, these two, these two, these two, and the middle one. Now, before I put this in a baggie, I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to take a pen, and I'm going to put an arrow to the top of the block, or whatever you want to do. But I'm going to put an arrow all in the same direction. Because once I put this in the bag, I don't know which one faces up. And the reason I want to do this is because I'm not sure what my fabric is. It's in my pack, and I have a lot of directional fabric. And some fabric is directional, and you don't even know it. So this way, if I've got directional fabric, I can tell that this is the top, and then the bottom of this arrow is the bottom, and so on and so forth. This really helps when I go to put this on my fabric to prepare my block. All right, so I'm going to take a baggie, and I'm going to carefully lift this. And if it shifts, it doesn't matter. But I'm going to carefully lift this up and just kind of dump it into my baggie. And then I'm going to take my H7 label and stick it in my baggie. And then I have my H7 block. And I'm going to turn the page and go on to my H8 block. All right, so I look at my book and it says H8. And it's got this, but I've got an EPP modified because I labeled it at the beginning when I cracked open my H roll pack. So I go to my insert, and the first thing I notice is that this looks like one big piece, and so I refer to my big pile of blocks, and I have an H8 background block. So I'm going to stick this close by so that when I go to label all my bits, I have it there to label properly. In this case, when I look at the book, it says that the, you know, the color scheme says that it's going to be background. So I'm not going to put a dot on my piece for, because it's not fa focus fabric, it's background fabric. So I'm going to leave it as it is. So now I'm going to find my pieces in my pile. Because I sorted a little bit, I've got these pieces, which I can tell that goes here. And then I got a lot of these little triangles as well. So let me get started with that. All right, so I found my cross pieces, but I wanted to point something out here. This is a straight line. This has a slight curve to it because it's part of a bigger circle. So that when you put it together, you have a curved surface. And if you don't put it on the right way, then it just goes from curved to flat. And you can double check this by seeing if you can put these pieces together. If you try to do it this way, it's not going to be straight. So I'm going to actually end up labeling this side to make sure that this is an outside. I can, I'll do that right now, actually. This is out. Because I'll know that this is my middle bit, but that this is the outer. And so this goes here. And then these go here. And then this guy has curved ends on both sides, so it doesn't matter if I put out on it or not. It just matters if I have if if this is a focus fabric and it's directional, then I'll have to label it. But I will do that at the end when I refer back to my Dear Jane book picture. All right, now here's the problem I run into a lot because there's multiple blocks in the bags. And this is why when you're using the paper pieces booklet, you have to be really picky. Occasionally when you use the Dear Jane book, it's not 
as accurate as the booklet, but the booklet is what Paper Pieces uses in the computer to make the blocks to then cut them. So, this side right here fits pretty much exactly. Well, then I was checking more triangles, and this one fits in the white part, and it touches the inside of the black. But because I know this one fits, I'm going to verify that this is the right size. And in fact, these triangles are different sizes. So what I can determine from that is that there's another block with almost this size triangle. I'm going to assume at this point, and I don't know because I haven't finished sorting, that I'm going to assume at this point that this size triangle is the correct size triangle. If there's not 16 of these in there, then that's not the case. If there's 16 of these in there, then that's the case. But I'm going to assume, based on the previous bag sorts that I've done, that this is the correct size triangle, and I'm going to use this triangle to find the other 15 and make sure that I line them up on the edge. All right, so this is interesting. I have 16 triangles for this black that fit perfectly. And the slightly smaller ones, I also have exactly 16 of the slightly smaller ones. So, like I said, the ones that fit exactly, I'm going to assume, are for this. But I'm going to refer to my book here to find out exactly what other block we're dealing with first before I label them and commit to that decision. All right, so this is the block with the 16. And then this is the other block, and this does not have a modification to it, so therefore the pieces are out of this graphic. So I've got one of these triangles, and I'm going to check it to this corner. And sure enough, these are exactly the fit. And this is why you want to verify everything before you commit to labeling them. So I'm going to then go back to this and label all of these as H8. All right, so I got all my H8 blocks labeled. And so I'm going to, again, refer back to my Dear Jane book. And we have these bits that face outward for the triangles in that block of four. And then all of the little pie pieces, I guess, of what I'll call them, are where the thing is. So I got pie pieces, two, three, and four. And then I have these bits that go out. These bits, these bits, and these bits. And again, I will verify that one more time. So I got these, and then this, and then that, and then that, and then that. And I will label this for my fabric as well. Okay, now that I'm done with these, I will get a baggie again and dump these bits in it. I'll take my big piece and I'll stick it in my baggie. And then I will carefully pick this up and dump it in my baggie as well. 